Good morning. You're joining us right outside the Supreme Court in just the next minute. What we hear, the hearing will begin in the black money case right behind me at the Supreme Court. A massive media stakeout outside the Supreme Court, understandably so, because it was yesterday where uh, the Supreme Court served an ultimate, giving it. We'll get Preeti back up in a short while from now. But as she was telling us, the hearing in the Supreme Court is about to begin any minute now. We can expect Mukul Rahadgi to give to the Supreme Court bench a sealed envelope. That envelope will contain the names of 628 people who own foreign bank accounts. Of these, how many bank accounts are illegal? How many of them have in fact black money stashed in them? The government is not clear on that fact and that point has been conveyed to the Supreme Court as well. Preeti, as you were taking us through uh, the fact really that not all of these bank accounts in fact have illegal money and that really has been a point of concern as far as uh, the privacy laws in our country are concerned. Well, you're, you're bang on uh, there, Abiral, and that was exactly what was pointed out uh, by none else than the finance minister. It was pointed out uh, by the attorney general, Mukul Rohagi, and we're going to make, uh, you know, we're going to cut across to Ms. Doshi. She's a tax expert. She's in the studio with us, and she will explain in layman terms what it means, because uh, there is a fair bit of credence to what most big business houses are saying, that uh, this could just tarnish images, because at one level, it's not entirely illegal to hold a bank account abroad. Uh, Ms. Doshi, let me quickly bring you in on this uh, you know we were there is a perception especially on the poll plank that the bjp campaigned on on what uh, Ms., uh, on what uh, the likes of ramdev have said that a perception that every bank account which is abroad is illegal can you take us through that can you break that myth yeah see so far as uh, a non resident indian is concerned they can open an account for account abroad wherever they are at the time when they are non residents and after they come back to India, they, continue, they can continue to hold that account. So it's a legal account which they can hold. Similarly, an Indian can now also, under there is a, a remittance scheme, liberalized remittance scheme as it is called, of Reserve Bank of India, which came into force from 2004, under which an Indian, an individual, can also remit money abroad. Now this, could, this money could be for higher studies, that is education, it could be for yeah. investments, it could be for a variety of purposes which are permitted. So therefore a person can legitimately hold an account abroad and can also remit money abroad. Now the remittance amounts also yeah. have been varying from time to time but one could have that amount legitimately transferred from India. So Ms. Doshi. So, yes. Ms. Doshi, the various apprehensions, the various apprehensions raised by various, uh, uh, you know, houses, business houses, are quite relevant. Then, yes, they are. The only point that we need to bear in mind is that uh, the information which is currently available is for 2006. Now, this information which was stolen and then which has moved through middlemen to the governments, foreign governments, French and German, and then which has been passed on to Indian government, relates to the year 2006. Uh, and prior there too. So therefore what okay. we have today may not be exactly relevant at the relevant time. Though at that time also people could have legitimate accounts which was through, uh, through of course the Reserve Bank approvals and what not. All right, the story uh, appreciated, appreciated, Ms. Josie. We'll just, of course, keep coming back to you in the studio, giving us, uh, uh, you know, breaking down in layman terms on what the story actually means. But this is where the big story is emanating uh, out of, and uh, the latest. The latest that what we are getting in the hearing has already started uh, in the Supreme Court. That's what we are getting in. Um, cross headlines today to get you one up on all developments. Jasteerat Singh Baba, my colleague, is right now inside the Supreme Court giving us uh, the latest updates. Uh, and the latest that he's told me right now is that the hearing has in fact begun. <laughs> Alright, that's the latest breaking news that we are getting in. My colleague Jaskira Singh Baba, breaking news uh, right uh, from inside the Supreme Court. The list has been submitted. What we are getting to know that three, uh, three sets of envelopes have been put forth in front of the Supreme Court. The list has been submitted containing 628 names. It's been done in confidentiality in a sealed envelope. The latest information coming in at this point of time suggests that uh, three sets of lists were submitted. In fact, three envelopes is what we are getting to know were submitted in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, that's the latest information being flashed uh, 
uh, by Jaskirat Singh Baba, my colleague who's inside the Supreme Court, keeping our viewers one up on all developments. I'd like to quickly bring in Ashish Merushi on this uh, breaking news. Ashish, now that the job is done, now that the list has been submitted, three sets uh, is what we are getting to know, have been submitted uh, to the Honourable Bench. Uh, what from here on? Co maintaining confidentiality now would be key. Any leaks could cost the country, especially where treaties with other countries are concerned. Well, we have to see, you know, what these three sets are, Preeti. First of all, I believe, to my understanding, would the three sets would be that one would be the NRIs who had the right to open legitimate accounts. Second would be, uh, you know, the investigations uh, uh, on the cases on which the, the, the tax department has already investigated. And the third list would be where investigations would have begun, but not much have been done. So these, I believe, should be the three lists. But then again, we have to look at the background of this list from where did it come? If you remember, you know, there was a person called Falciani who was working for HSBC. He stole that list and, he, you know, there were around 24,000 names in that list, which is, which is not only, which is not only, uh, you know, in India. It is also, uh, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the world where people were holding black money. Now, but look at the action what India has taken and look, compare it with, uh, with the United States. The moment United States got this list, they, they were bang on it and this, they immediately asked Switzerland to reveal the data authenticate it and they brought back huge amounts of sum. So certainly you know the, the way, this, the snail pace at which India has investigated and compared to US, you know there is there is a, a hell lot of a difference. But again, here now since it has come to SIT, uh, it has come to Supreme Court, the Supreme Court now the investigation is going to be under the purview of Supreme Court. So a lot of hope that SIT will speed up the investigations and again we, as promised by Narendra Modi during the, the, the uh, you know, the campaign for 2014 elections, we expect at least they, during their tenure that the black money should come back to India. All right, Ashish Merashi, they're uh, giving us an example, drawing parallel to how the United States of America dealt with a similar matter there. Uh, uh, it was very quick in dealing with it, brought back huge sums of money where India is concerned. Uh, uh, the Supreme Court has been monitoring investigations since the year 2009. It's been five years. Uh, the NDA rode to power on the political plank of exposing the black money racket, did not do so, and was ultimately forced to do so by the Supreme Court today. The latest breaking news that we are tracking, uh, Jaskirat Singh Baba, my colleague, who's inside the Supreme Court, uh, sending us information right now. Three sets, three sets uh, of uh, a list, three sets have been submitted in front of the Supreme Court. Ashish Merishi, my colleague who's standing by, is taking through. Uh, we don't want to speculate at this point of time, but in all probabilities, these three sets will contain different names comprising, uh, and I'd like to go across to Ashish for that. Ashish, once again, for the benefit of our viewers who are joining us, uh, what do you reckon these three sets could be for? All right, we seem to be having an audio problem with Ashish Merushi. We're going to try and reconnect that. Uh, but the latest bit of breaking news that we're getting in at this point of time, just Steve Singh Bawa right now inside the Supreme Court. Breaking news uh, that uh, the lists have been submitted. We'll keep getting you political reactions on that as well. Earlier on, Attorney General Mukul Rohatki had stated very clearly that they have absolutely no qualms. The list will be submitted. Albert confidentiality would be maintained. Uh, I'd like to cut across back to the studio uh, for a larger perspective uh, from Miss Doshi, who's with us right now she's a tax expert miss doshi what from here on uh, i believe three sets uh, have been submitted uh, in front of the supreme court uh, all three sets will contain different uh, names uh, keeping in mind the 628 names which find mention in this infamous hsbc list what from here on uh, looks like in the third list which is the status report would have the position of where the cases in which government has got some information where they have started the investigation in some cases they could have closed the investigation also because they might have got the information and they would have concluded whether there is uh, black money or not and if some tax is payable they could have recovered the tax so perhaps the status report would contain that so far as the first list is concerned which is about treaties Perhaps it could have the list of the countries with which Indian government is entering into the tax information uh, agreements. This is uh, where the, some cases treaties have been revised, some cases there could be additional protocols. So this seems to be the position. Uh, the second list I didn't get what, what uh, it has. First is a list of treaties. 
Um, Ms. Soshi, Ms. Soshi, I'd like to come in also. I'd like you to explain for our viewers what will a leak from here cost the country? Sorry, I didn't get your question. What would a leak, Ms. Doshi? If the names in these sealed envelopes are leaked, how would this cost the country? Yeah, this is uh, will certain countries then send more information, share further information with India? Yeah, see, basically this is stolen data, right? So the stolen data, so far as France and Germany are concerned, they have purchased, they have acquired. And there is a huge debate going on as to whether one can rely on the stolen data in legal proceedings or not. But so far as India is concerned, they have made it available to India. Maybe it was under a separate agreement because the tax information uh, uh, protocol, the exchange of information protocol has been signed recently. It is 2010. And then the question that is arising is that whether it applies retrospectively okay. or prospectively. The uh, the French government, uh, uh, the Swiss... Before I quickly cut across to our other correspondents, I'd like to come to you for a quick comment. Uh, the ED at this point of time at loggerheads with the income tax department over uh, the investigations in the list. Should not the income tax authority share the list with the ED? Who is she asking? She's asking me. She said, go to someone. All right, we seem to have lost our phone connect, uh, our audio connect with Ms. Joshi. We're going to try and re-establish that. But let me quickly um, cut across uh, to Ashish Meharishi and pose the same question to him. Ashish broke this news earlier on today where he reported that the Enforcement Directorate uh, uh, is at loggerheads with the Income Tax Authority of India over this particular list. Uh, Ashish, uh, um, should not the Income Tax Authority of India go ahead and share the names in this list with the Enforcement Directorate? Well, they should. You know, in fact, if you see whatever has happened in the court till now, let's 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 put it in perspective now. One, they have given the list of 627 people, not 628, as it was mentioned earlier. Two, they have given whatever the correspondence happened between them and the French authorities. And third, they have given the the you know the the status report as far as the special investigation team goes. So three set of documents that have been submitted with the Supreme Court. Then they have given a deadline as well the deadline they have said march uh, 2015 why they have given march 2015 as deadline is the reason is there was an amendment brought to the income tax act because earlier uh, you know income tax act according to the income tax act cases only six six years prior to the uh, the financial year could have been opened but now uh, because of the amendment brought into the income tax act cases can up to 16 years be opened because this list is of 2006 you know this this is very very important here that the list is of 2006 and it was because of this that the amendment was brought to the income tax act and now cases up to 16 years uh, you know can be opened so here uh, not only this that the income tax authorities should investigate but is it a simple case of tax is it a simple case of tax that is a big question mark Preeti. here enforcement directorate is an organization which look, works under two acts that is foreign exchange management act and then there is a prevention of money laundering act and uh, these these two uh, you know acts empower them to investigate into matters where we have to find out whether the money is laundered abroad or not is it terror money is it proceeds of crime or is it normal uh, you know uh, tax case or is yeah. it that money has gone through and that's the importance abroad? why the ED needs to come money landed abroad that is that is that has to be looked into all right, appreciate you joining us, Ashish Mehrishi, getting us the very latest development taking place at this point of time. The ED uh, at loggerheads wants uh, the, uh, uh, the Income Tax Department of India to share that list. Now, on the sidelines, political developments taking place. Uh, Asha Ahmed Khan, my colleague, been tracking developments at the Congress. Brijesh Pandey from the BJP and in the studio with me is our executive editor, Javed Ansari. I'd like to cut across immediately to Brijesh Pandey at this point of time. Brijesh, uh, multiple thoughts emerging from the BJP. A, lost opportunity where most of them, a cross-section of uh, the people from the BJP might be thinking that they could, could have worked this to their advantage but completely has worked against them. On the other hand, there is a cross-section that also believes Prajesh and doesn't it, that uh, the Supreme Court could have asked the SIT directly for the names. Why embarrass the centre? 
Well, Preeti, we have to understand the genesis of this latest crisis. It was when the Attorney General submitted an application before the court asking them that the court, that centre cannot reveal names because it is bound under the confidentiality clause. It blew up in the face of the BJP because, you know, it immediately drew sharp reactions both from the public as well as uh, the opposition parties which started asking uh, question, probing questions from the BJP that if this was the case, then what exact, what else was the, was the UPA saying or telling to the whole world? And why did the BJP then went out and and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, carried out a long uh, political uh, 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 reaction on this. So this was the way, this was exactly when it started. And a party which has prided under its open communication or its clear communication clearly bungled up in the Supreme Court, where where yesterday, if the Attorney General, the Solicitor General, all they had to need, all they uh, need was to do was to tell the Supreme Court that the BJP has already, that the government has already supplied the list to the SIT, and then it wouldn't have been come up for this such sharp braiding from by the Supreme Court. So it was a major bungling on the part of the government and later on when the finance minister clarified and said that you know that they, they, they have no uh, qualms about submitting the list to the Supreme Court, the political damage had already been done because you know I mean apart from the nitty gritties or the legalities of the case, the biggest question is the kind of political damage this particular case is going to do to a full-fledged majority uh, led by ND, uh, BJP led NDA and this is exactly where the government will have to do some serious introspection because the file which has been submitted to the Supreme Court under sealed envelope, chances of names leaking will be uh, very uh, minuscule because if uh, any leak would also do immediate uh, contempt All of right, uh, right, right. court by the Vijesh, Supreme I'm, Court. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to come in. Vijesh, I'm afraid I'm going to come in right this point of time. Do hold on to that thought. We're getting some breaking news coming in from the Supreme Court. would directly like to cut across uh, to my colleague Ashish Merushi for that. It's over to you Ashish. What's the breaking news you have? This is breaking, this is breaking. As we were discussing, Preeti, in the morning that ED is at loggerheads with income tax. Now, Supreme Court has said that we trust SIT and it has asked SIT to hand over the list and investigate to ED as well as CBI. This is what was required from the beginning, which the government was not doing. So here, this is something very, very important. That is the, that is the order of the Supreme Court, where they want the list to be investigated by the nodal agency. We have to see how that money landed abroad. Is it proceeds of crime? Is it bribe money? So all this now is yes. going to be investigated under three acts. That is, go that is okay. going to be Prevention right, of Ashish. Corruption Act, that Ashish. is uh, under which the CBI works. That is pre Prevention Ashish, of Corruption give Act. Three points. Give us three points. Ashish, Ashish, at this point of time, just give us three breaking points which are emanating from the Supreme Court. Three important breaking points is that one, the C uh, they say that uh, you know, the Supreme Court says that we trust SIT. First of all, the, you know, so it, the purview uh, that we are saying that it is going to be only with income tax authorities, it is not going to be there. So th they say that the, the, they trust SIT, then the S they have asked the SIT to further investigate and give it to ED and CBI. So, Preeti, here the important portion is that it is not going to be investigated only under the Income Tax Act because if you remember, they had been saying, the government, the finance ministry has been saying in the past they can only investigate the tax matters because the treaty is double taxation avoidance agreement due to which the only tax cases can be, you know, investigated. Now, it is going to be investigated under three acts, that is Foreign Exchange Management Act, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, as well as Prevention of Corruption Act. That is what we were discussing in the morning, that how that money landed yes. abroad. Whose money is it? Is it bribe money? Is it terror funds? Is it proceeds of crime? Nobody knows. The tax authorities do not have the power to investigate that. So how that money is, has landed abroad is now going to be investigated. As we discussed in the morning, this has been guided by yes. the Supreme Court. So this is a very, very important observation All by right. the Supreme you know, Court. Now yes. the list will go to the right nodal agency. All right, uh, Ashish, break it down for us. Now, what does this mean when these three agencies have also been roped in in the ambit of investigation? Break it down in layman terms. What does it mean right now? In layman's term, Preeti, it is that now the government in the past has been declining. They have been very clearly saying that we are not going to share the list with anyone apart from income tax because they say the list has been shared the list has been authenticated by the different countries especially the Swiss authorities only for tax purposes now it is not only the tax purposes it is going to be investigated on yes. how that money landed abroad it, 
and if it reaches the you know the enforcement directorate and uh, uh, CBI, they have the power to find out on how that money landed abroad. Is it a simple tax case? That if it is a simple tax case, then income tax can investigate. But how that money landed abroad? Whose money was it? Is it proceeds of crime? Is it is it terror funding? What was it? What is what 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 what, what sort of money it is? Is it normal? Is it bribe money? Yes. These things, these angles will be investigated by these two agencies. And that is what we were discussing in the morning. This is going Aadi, to be, you know, is you know, it is a for the government. It is a very big embarrassment, you know, f because, you know, Preeti, you have to understand the most important aspect has been the list has been with the Indian authorities for at least three and a half, four years. Yes. And they have been saying that we are not going to share with the parallel agency, the nodal agency which should investigate foreign yes. funds, for funds which are Indian money which is lying abroad. And if they are not ready to share with enforcement directorate or CBI, it was very, very surprising. Now the income tax authorities have been investigating it at a very, very snail pace. We all know how they have they have given three names yesterday to the Supreme Court to which they were very unhappy the Supreme Court saying what sort of investigation is this in in so many years you are giving us only three names and that to the cases that have reached the level of prosecution out of those three names at least one was already in the public domain now here here Preeti you have to see that is what we were discussing why the yes. you know the government whether it was yes. the past government or this government this government has also been here for almost 120 days now we have to find yes. understand we have to find out, the government Huge. has to answer why it was not being given to the nodal agency to investigate. Uh, wh why were they yes. waiting for the Supreme Court to give them the directive to give it to the, uh, to the nodal agency? Exactly, why was it waiting for the Supreme Court to give it to the nodal agencies? Uh, that's the big breaking news coming in at this point of time. Uh, uh, hugely embarrassing for the government. Uh, we will keep tracking details, getting our viewers the very latest, uh, your, uh, the latest perspectives coming in. Do stay with us. We're going to slip into a quick break. We're back in exactly two minutes. Do stay with us.